of all of the areas of the mega pizza plex that I built in Minecraft, the first cave was definitely the location that I struggled building the most. So in today's video, we're going to take a better look at this build and see why it was so difficult to recreate in Minecraft. Before we get started, make sure you leave a like on this video and subscribe with notifications on so that way you don't miss out on my videos and you can help the channel to continue to grow. But with all that being said, let's get started with the Fazcade. As we walk into the West Arcade, the first thing we're going to notice right away is the giant monument of the Core 4 Glamrock animatronics, Freddy, Monty, Chica, and Roxy, all on top of some speakers as they jam out on their instruments of choice. It was a little challenging to get all four of them in such a small area like this and making sure they still were recognizable, but after some workarounds, I do think that this is a fitting Minecraft recreation. This is the only other golden statue of the Glamrock animatronics in the Pizzaplex that isn't the ones that you would find in Rockstar Row, and of course it makes perfect sense to have it in the centerpiece of the Fazcade just because of how grand this three-story arcade is. Before we move on to the arcade itself, however, there is this functional saving station that saves our spawn point in case we were to unfortunately die, so if we go ahead and respawn, we're going to spawn in right in front of the saving spot. These are littered all over the pizza plex and work in the exact same way in all of the spots where these saving stations would be located in Security Breach. Now let's go ahead and move on to the dance floor, however, which is right next to the entrance here, so if we take a right, we're going to end up in this massive dance floor right here, where of course we have DJ Music Man's main stage, where he goes up on here and jams out to whatever type of music he wants to play. DJ Music Man is still to this day my favorite animatronic to come from the FNAF series and it was really really exciting to be able to build this place in Minecraft. This area here is where the build starts to get very complicated as I had to remodel the outlines multiple times in order to get the correct shapes and angles of the walls but also to get the decorations in their proper places just like these blacked out cardboard cutouts of the glam rocks in their Fazerblast suits. Not only is the shape of the structure weird, but also the blocks that make it up, such as this block here, which is brown tint glazed terracotta. I don't think I've ever used these glazed terracotta blocks before in Minecraft, as they can be really difficult to fit into builds. However, these fit perfectly for the West Arcade dance floor. Here is a small little patio that sits next to the dance floor, where there's a few tables and chairs dotted around. But most importantly, underneath this banner here is the audio manager circuit breaker that has been placed just by using a lever and a piece of gray concrete behind it. In Security Breach, these levers are used to reset the power of the West Arcade. However, in the Security Breach map, you're going to have to download this world to find out what this does. Let's move off the dance floor and continue on down this hallway here, where there is a massive tunnel that the DJ would use to travel around to different parts of the room, maybe to even scare a visitor by popping his head out occasionally as someone passes by. You can also think that there's some smaller one of these tunnels, maybe where the wind-up music men would be able to climb around the different parts of the Pizzaplex. But as we move on down to the end of this hallway here, we're going to find find ourselves the bathroom area of the Fazcade. So if we go ahead and walk on through this door, we're going to end up in the Glamrock Chica and Roxanne Wolf themed bathroom. So if we go ahead and walk on through here, we're just going to find ourselves some stalls, some sinks, and then there's also this tunnel here, which is on the ceiling. I'm not entirely sure why these are here in the bathroom. It's kind of weird. Aside from that small detail, however, there is still some other decorative pieces around, such as a pixel art of Roxanne Wolf and Glamrock Chica, and some also colorful patterns that are lining along these walls. Heading out of this bathroom and moving on to the next, they are very similar in design, except this time it's of course themed around the boy animatronics, Montgomery Gator, and Freddy Fazbear. Most decorations are the exact same. We have more themed trash cans, some more stores lining the wall, and we have that hole on the ceiling. Once again, kinda weird. There is, however, a door here which leads to the supply closet that is in the men's bathroom with another one of the breaker switches that would turn on power to the location and a small little custom player head of the puppet. Now, as we move out of this bathroom, we find ourselves in this small space here with a large utility tunnel above the men's room. And behind that is another hallway that leads back down to the entrance of the Faz Cade. So we're going to pass ourselves some more maintenance tunnels, some other pieces of decorations. And once we walk up to the end here, we're going to find ourselves behind the golden Glamrock animatronic statues. Now it's time to take a look at the arcade part of the Faz Cade itself. So here we are in this massive open room where tons of different types of minigames are scattered all around the place. Now, the main floor is mostly made up of air hockey tables and racing games. However, if we walk up this little step here, we can find tons of stand-up arcade machines that are lining along these walls. Speaking of the walls in this room, this was the part of the build where I took the longest time to decide what would be best to work with. I'll show some images of the different behind the scenes 
screenshots of the outline's construction and hopefully it will give you a better idea of what the building process was like for this area. This was the biggest challenge of the West Arcade and I knew it would be before I even started building which is why this was actually the first part of the West Arcade that I outlined. Trying to make this build at the scale it should be while being able to fit in these tunnels was quite challenging especially with all the curved angles that this wall is made up of and on top of that having to build this at the right level in game made it very challenging. And after multiple days of redesigning this is what I came up with so I could finally start filling in the walls of this place and all was finally good. Until the week after that where I had to lift the entire build up by 10 blocks to fit Bonnie Ball in the right place. Yeah, I wasn't joking when I said there were some challenges with this place. So hopefully you can start to see the roller coaster of emotions that came with this build, but I must say that all of that work was definitely worth it, as you can end up making some incredible looking things. While I was rambling on about that, we've now walked up to the second floor balcony of this area. Now there's not too much going on here, just some seating areas and even more arcades lining along this wall, which if I have to be honest, was very time consuming, picking up three different blocks and then placing them in this order, just for a single arcade machine, and then having to do that with with multiple different types of blocks around the entire area. However, all of this sounds very silly after my rant about the outline, so let's just go ahead and move on. As we walk up the spiral staircase here, we're now going to end up on the third floor of the arcade, which probably has the most going on with it, as like I was just talking about, this place has hundreds of stacked arcade machines that are scattered all over the floor. As we enter the top floor, this place has a smaller little boothing area with a coffee table and some sofas around it, and then behind this interestingly decorative wall is a little patio here with some more seating areas, and then of course in the center here is a little counter where the Pizzaplex staff would be able to work during the day. The other side of the patio leads down to another arcade area. Now, while none of these arcade machines are actually functional in the map, there is, however, one arcade machine that is functional that we'll get to in a little bit. There are some more tunnels and arcades lining along the walls. However, I want to take a quick stop at this place right here, as just like the top balcony view of the atrium, this top view of the Fazcade is one of my absolute favorite sites of the Mega Pizzaplex to look at. Even though I have many hours of just building the Pizzaplex in Minecraft, a lot of those hours have also just been me exploring the place as I've absolutely loved being able to look around the Pizzaplex but recreated in Minecraft. Making our way down this walkway, we pass even more ATMs and arcade machines and even another one of the circuit breaker switches that is just put in this corner right here. Of course, there are even more tunnels lining along the walls and even one in the center of the ceiling here where Music Man would be able to crawl on through and go through the different tunnels scattered around the place. However, on this side of the room here, there is a bridge that connects the two sides of the arcade together. Just to really show off the true scale of some of the areas of the Pizzaplex, Fazbear Entertainment really went ahead and built a bridge in an arcade room. I don't know how you can show off any more than that. Now let's go back to the other side of the Fazcade so that we can take a look at what's going on above over here, as it's not just arcades that make up this walkway, but there are a handful of these small karaoke rooms along the wall which are a lot brighter than the darker Fazcade areas, but let's take a look inside where there's just a few sofas scattered around, a small table in the middle, and of course the main stage up front here with a small microphone stand in the center where the brave person could go up on stage and try singing. Now I have a terrible singing Voice, so I'm not even going to try singing up on the stage. So I'm going to take the time to tell you that if you've made it this far into the video, you must enjoy the type of content. So make sure you subscribe to the channel with notifications on so that way you don't miss out on my future uploads. Not ashamed to have self-promotion midway through the video. Now let's pass on through some more arcade and ATM machines and take a look at this view from above the main dance floor, directly above DJ Music Man stage, where we can take a look at this wall here where there's even more tunnels across the room from us. A very nice view to look at, especially if we're lucky enough to see the DJ crawl along it. However, However, we are unfortunately in Minecraft and not Security Breach, so today is not our lucky day. Hi, Editor Me here. This guy thinks he is so funny with his sarcastic jokes. I'm very sorry you've had to put up with him for the last 8 minutes. So, to make fun of this person, let me provide you with a Minecraft recreation of Music Man crawling along the wall and into a tunnel. Please enjoy. Music Man! Man! Is that better? Now you can continue watching on this lucky day where you saw Minecraft Music Man crawling on the wall.
Moving on behind us is another karaoke room, except this time you can see it's a lot darker, and that is because this room is either under construction or has been torn through by an animatronic. This table has been flipped on the side, there's a few boxes on the wall here, and of course the TV monitors are all turned off. So this place has definitely been closed off from visitors no matter what has happened in this room. Now there is one final karaoke room that is available to visitors, so if we go ahead and pass on down here past this closed off staff door and some more racing arcades, we do find the fourth and final karaoke room where once again it has the bright lights around the place to indicate that it is open to visitors. Now not much goes on in these rooms which is why it doesn't surprise me that not many people talk about these karaoke rooms in the Fazcade. Either they don't know about these rooms until now or they've just completely forgotten about them. What isn't forgotten however and is undoubtedly the most iconic part of the Fazcade it's what's behind this door here which leads us to the arcade maintenance hallway. There is so many things to look at here so before we do let's just go ahead and walk into the security office and check out what's going on inside. Of course, the main focus of the room is the staff bot repair station that's put right in the middle of this room, which does make it rather compact to walk around. However, we can still go up to these main security offices where there's a few TV monitors using custom player heads, some storage units, and some boxes that are covering up this security door. How different the FNAF games would be if the security guard just did this exact same thing. On the other side of the room, there's some shelving with an arcade next to it, some more staff equipment, and behind the staff bot repair machine is a staff bot head that's just been put on top of this dumpster. But now let's take a look at the hallway itself, where we have so much to look at, from the forklift parked in the corner, to some repair benches along the wall, to some stand-up arcade machines that are scattered all along the room, to even shelving units to store different materials. This hallway was not too difficult to fill in, however, it did take a few attempts to make sure the shape of the hallway was accurate to how it is in security breach. You might have noticed by now that the main problem with the Fazcade are the angles that make up this build, and this hallway was no exception, as making curves in a game full of blocks can be quite challenging, especially on such a large scale like this. Now my favorite part of the hallway has to be this easter egg here, this glowing arcade machine. As you may or may not know, there are a lot of bugs in security breach. What is this? Stop breaking the game! And one of them is a glowing arcade machine in this hallway, so I thought it would be appropriate to have a very bright arcade in this hallway, honestly just for the fun of it, and I love this feature. Now as we near the end of the hallway, we pass yet another tunnel up on this wall here, but at the very end of the hallway, we of course have the main tunnel that DJ Music Man pops out of and then chases the player down the length of the entire hallway. I've definitely reenacted that chase sequence multiple times in this world, as that is honestly the highlight of Security Breach in my opinion, and I have replayed the West Arcade chase sequence so many times. Just under the tunnel, however, is an arcade machine, and this is actually Princess Quest 2, a playable arcade game in Security Breach, as well as this Minecraft map. I made sure to put as much functionality in this map as possible, and I did just that with these arcade mini games. So if you are interested in seeing me build the Princess Quest games, then be sure to check out the video where I build all three of those mini games. And if you want to see full playthroughs of each one, then be sure to let me know down in the comments, as well as subscribing with notifications on, so that way you know when that video releases. With all that being said, however, we have now checked out everything in the Fazcade. There is such a fun amount of things to look at in this place, so I really do hope that you enjoyed this tour where we got to take a look at all of it. I give a lot of criticism towards the construction of this area just because of how difficult it was to build. However, I must say that building this place was so much fun because of the challenges it provided. Building the entirety of the Mega Pizza Plex in Minecraft and then making it functional has pushed me out of my normal comfort zone and made me build in ways that I've never had in the past, all while using blocks that I would never never normally touch. The Fazcade was such a blast to build in Minecraft and explore in Security Breach, and for that reason, this place has a special place when it comes to my favorite things. I really hope that you enjoyed this video, and I can't wait for you to explore it all for yourself when the world releases. But with that, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to wrap it up for the tour of the Fazcade. I really do hope that you enjoyed this video, and we'll stick around to see what's coming up next. Remember to leave a like if you enjoyed, and subscribe to the channel with notifications on, so that way you don't miss out on my next video, where we're going to be taking an in-depth look at Fazablast. But with all that being said, thank you all so much for watching, and I will of course see you in my next video.